Hey, what's going on guys? Double One Eight Seth Shadow here. With the 4th of July weekend over, we had Anime Expo over the past weekend, which gave us the Cardfight Vanguard Deluxe set, which is a collection of various boss units in a newer promo SP rarity full art. I actually don't know if these are textured or not. I would assume that they are. But these are now available on the market, so I wanted to take a quick look at these before going more into some other items. So in this set, you can get Youthberg Skyfall Arms, Demonic Dredjeweled, Basagra, Welstra's in here, so is Leonorn and Jiva. And then you've also got the Grade 3 Magnolia along with the Grade 3 of Bastion as well. Which are also, well, Magnolia's sold, but looks like Bastion hasn't been getting any love at all. Nobody's bought any copies, and it's 1050 to start with. If you want to buy the full set, it's currently available for $340, and there are three listings of it. I remember, I recall that these sold retail at Anime Expo exclusively for 100 so that's basically over triple that price at this point. If we take a look at some of the other prices that are available, Skyfall Arms is currently the most expensive single with $70 to start with, and it's only got three listings. But I can't imagine there will be too many of these on the market given that it was an exclusive at Expo. Drajuled and Basagra tie for $50 for their lowest listing right now, while Welstra is $40. Then you have Leonorn and Jiva around $25 a piece, and then Magnolia Grade 3 and Bastion Grade 3, both around $10, but as I said, Bastion is not going anywhere. Yeah, even though talking about Prime last time, that one's going pr pretty well. Sickle Blade of Inquest Habitable Zone. This is a set 10 cycler card for Brantgate, but like many cards from set 10, it's been dropping in value. This card, you could buy it for $12 around release time, and then it got bought out for a little while. But now it's back under $10 with 36 listings available. Although the FFR is still on the rise, where it's over $90 for its base listing, and the market price is still around $80. But you were able to pick this up, I think, closer to $70 on the initial release. Great Sword of Fierce Black Flame Obscura. This is the Grade 2 version. The FFR of this card is bought out to the point of $100 right now. You've got the last one sold for $84.21, but there was a copy that sold for $90 before that. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if it was the same buyer picking up some of these. But in any case, only three listings left for over $100 a piece, but it hasn't sold for at least two weeks now. Though, once we get to set 11, there might be some more pushes to pick this card up. So, if you manage to get this around $50, you're doing much better than the rest of the market. Wavy Loss. This card, I talked about it a few times in Market Watch's way back, but... Back then, it used to be an 8 to even $15 card, but it's dropped hard. Now we've got 40 listings available for the Triple R as low as 401 Now I'm actually curious to see. Let's see. Last listing was actually sold 789 And if we take a look at the actual listings available, there are a good amount of 4 to $5 copies before it jumps up to about almost eight dollars where you have the vast majority of the quantities so these are mostly just sellers who are trying to offload their remaining copies right now but it's definitely a good price to pick this up at as this is good support for both Arkite and Eva. The anime for Wildress rebooted with its season three starting this past weekend and it featured about between Gi and Yu Yu. And with that, I wanted to go over some of the cards that went up on that, starting off, of course, with Nirvana Jiva. And in particular, I wanted to cover the DSR, which is now at four listings with a base of 170, and its market price is still about 115. 
Now, Jiva has historically not been as popular to pick up, especially even when it comes to its high rarities. And to be fair, this card hasn't sold since around the beginning of last month, but that did sell around 150 and then 121 as well, which has been the common sell. But the base is now 170 and it has a $5 shipping tag on top of it. Well, Jiva is, well, Virena is getting some new support when set 13 comes out, and now that the anime is out, we're likely to see a lot more cards based around the anime as we go forward for these next 12-ish episodes, I would assume. Trickstar, of course. No introduction needed on this one, but we do have a ton of different variants of Trickstar if you're looking to pick up your base ones or high rarities, which the DSR is still the most is still the highest rarity that we've got from set one but its price has dropped off from where it used to be this card was able to was hitting like 180 at some points usually around 160 now it's getting down to about 115 you have the hot stamp promo which is a congratulations promo that one's the second most expensive market price is about 26 listings are usually in the 20s you have the Bushiroad on the Road version, which is about $5 to pick up right now. You have the Monochrome Foil, which comes out of the February promo packs for tournaments. That is about $8 to start off with and has 8 listings. In fact, between the, the, between the DSR and this, these two have the least amount of listings right now, so definitely keep your eye on the Monochrome. And then the remaining ones, you've got the Triple Rare and then other various commons. But the monochrome one is still a dollar for the commons, so yeah, that thing is very nice looking. Esperidia was also featured in the Griffogila deck, as many players anticipated to be played in it. Of course, it didn't do much for the prices, they're all still about the same as where they're at. But as for the DSR, we've talked about this one a few times. Buying it around 80 has been pretty common, I'd say. And listings are over $100, but nobody has actually bought them that high. And in fact, the last sell on this one was also over a month ago. So I wouldn't anticipate too much movement on this, despite the showing, since it was long anticipated. And of course, you've got Drago Bakhtil, which is the Dragon Tree Wretch for Dragon Empire and Griffo Gila support. But unfortunately, the anime episode did not do much for this card's price, as the triple rare is still basically a dollar, and Bakhtil's FFR is still only hitting around 15. Of course, Bistatis, I covered this last time, but I have to cover it again because... Okay, so we, it looks like we have some more quantities here now, but it's around $8 if you want to pick it up. The thing is... Oh, jeez. I think we... Okay, maybe they actually lowered their prices somewhat, so much better. But this card is around $8 now. And last time I was looking at it, it actually had a lot more at 13 Good thing those seem to have just disappeared, unless I'm hoping they weren't. No, they weren't. Okay. Yeah, just... This card is up there. It's been up there since I last spoke about it. Just keep your eye on it if you haven't picked it up already. Unprecedent. I talked about this one for Megalazuchi, which is now confirmed to come out with set 11, but the card is still hovering around the $2 mark right now, while its FFR is still under $20. I'm not too surprised on that. I can't imagine Megalazuchi being too popular as time goes along, but it increased Unprecedent's price at least. Painkiller Angel. With Luard hype going on, I just wanted to go back to this one in particular because the special reprint version from set 9 is down to 5 listings in comparison to the double R from the first set, which has 20 listings. Both cards are around the same price, but it seems there's a lot more favor towards picking up the special reprint variant of it. And then when you come to the SP, this has been going down as it hasn't been selling at the $30 or $40 mark that it used to be at. So we've got a $28.99 listing now, and another one that sold only last month for about 18 so it's really just hype that keeps this card as high as it is, thanks to Luard. We'll see 
if if the buy if the buyers continue to hold off until it actually gets lower, but we'll see. Skull Witch the Main, I wanted to go over just last night. It was sold out for the Triple R, but it looks like one copy ended up back on the market. I already talked about how the SP is sold out. And it's $25 right now. There's only one listing, two copies, but others have sold for $25, and someone actually bought a $31 copy the other day, so... Yeah, the hype is still going stronger for Nemain as compared to Painkiller Angel. Just keep that in mind. Diantha from set 6 is still holding pretty well at about $15, and it has been selling pretty well. Well, not $15. In fact, it's been selling for $20 on top of that. There's only one $15 listing on this card right now, while the rest of them are at least $20. So Diantha's actually more expensive than it lets on when you just look at it on the front page. Bills Virena, the FR of this card, has been seeing an increase in value as of late. Hasn't been selling as consistently, but this card was $2-$1 for a little while, and now it's closer to $4. As Nirvana Jiva continues to get more support, this card is played in almost every variant just for the ability to pick up appropriate overdress units that you may be missing or you had to discard early. And on top of that, it's not targetable, which makes it decent against the Gandiva matchup as well. But this card is going up in value, so keep that in mind, too. Of Ophelia. This week is going to see the release of Festival Collection 2023, which means Wallista is going to be seeing more play after this weekend begins. Prices haven't really changed between the Triple R and the SP. I thought this one would go higher, but at the very least, it definitely hasn't gone down. But there are only three listings on the Triple R and five listings available on the SPs, so they're still holding well. And then, of course, with Festival Collection 2023, I just want to go over Lyrical Set 1, where the LSRs, we got some lofty valuations on Claressa and Felty Rosa. They're both one listing left for 400 and 450 each. The remaining ones are all under 200 at least, and the LSP pack, not doing much favors there. Of course, Misa is still really up there at 153. That's the critical trigger from the LSP pack. But I mean, Lyrical Set 1 is one of those sets that just has a lot of printing, so you really don't have to worry about base rarities getting too high up there. And even when you take a look at some of these SPs, well, Lista ones are getting up there. Claressa sees a bit more as well. So the Perfect Guards are not really doing too hot. They're still holding between like the $10 and $15 mark. What else have we got? Felty Rosa is kind of scattered. Well, Lista, the Grade 3 SP, is still 20 Oh, Diesel's out of stock. That's one of the perfect guards that you can pick up from this set. Hmm. All right, what else? Strongest Idol, the order is now $15. Elvira for Willista, 30 And I think we can stop there for the time being. But yeah, taking a look at Diesel, $15 was the last sell, and that was late last month. Otherwise, it's mostly been selling for $9, but yeah, it's the only perfect guard that's out of stock right now. That's interesting. And to wrap up today is Best Harvest from Set 3. Gandiva has been seeing some fallouts in prices among its singles, and Best Harvest is also starting to trickle down on top of that. The Hollow Oil is now under its market price of $5.45 with a baitless listing of $3.61, and then the rare is 225 right now, and there are quite a few copies on the market at this point. Set three again is one of those sets where there are just too there's just too much in circulation, so it's hardly it's hardly a surprise that stuff like this just goes down even after it gets hyped. Thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you guys later.